So, I could list probably seven to ten different things from the book of Hebrews that we tend to revert to. I'm not going to do that. I just picked out three, um, the first three in the book that I kind of relate to. Number one, we tend to revert to supernatural beings instead of being supernatural. I'll say that again. Mm -hmm. We tend to revert to supernatural beings, like angels and whatever, instead of being supernatural ourselves. Mm -hmm. Sharon would like that one. <laughs> yeah. Looking for something, it's the same as saying we're looking for something outside of ourselves, external, instead of internal. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 5, and then in the same chapter, 8 through 11. Yeah, if you got it. For he did not subject to angels the world to come, concerning which we are speaking. For he did not subject to angels the world to come, concerning which we are speaking. And 8 through 10. 8 through 11, yeah. Thou hast put all things in subject or subjection under his feet, for in subjecting all things to him, he left nothing that is not subject to him. But now we do not yet see all things subjected to him. But we do see him who was made for a little while lower than the angels, namely Jesus, because of the suffering of death crowned with glory and honor, mm -hmm. that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. For it was fitting for him, for whom are all things, and through him are all things, and bringing many sons to glory, to perfect the author of their salvation through sufferings. For both he who sanctifies and those who are sanctified are all from one Father, for which reason he is not ashamed to call them brethren. You can see right away that the writer of Hebrews, he's, he's much better than I would ever be at it. He's, making, he's not putting the angels down. He's just saying, well done. Now can we move on to the Son? Because everything has not been put in subjection to angels. It's all been put in subjection and under the feet of the Son. And then it gets I think it gets really exciting because then he starts talking about who's also bringing in the sons of glory, the family. If we ever could get a hold of just that, that actually we're brothers, we're sons. He's put all things under the feet of his sons. Yeah, the look you're giving me is like, oh my goodness. <laughs> this is what he's trying to say. We've got to transfer, we've got to get our eyes off of the angels and onto the sun. If we can transition from angels to the sun, then we can become and be transformed as sons. You'll grow up into all these things. We have an appreciation and understanding for the nature and ministry of angels, but it's not about angels, it's about sons. It's about people, the family of God. Remember Jacob in the Old Testament, he has one of the greatest experiences anybody's ever had. The brother has got angels going up and down a ladder mm -hmm. from heaven to earth. And when he comes to, he doesn't say, oh my goodness, those were the coolest angels I ever saw. Wow, did you see that one angel? He was whipping around and the other. He's not talking about angels. He says, I didn't know God was in this place. I was absolutely clueless. It's an old message in the Bible. It goes way back. The second thing we revert to, first one, we revert to supernatural beings instead of being supernatural. The second one is we, we revert to the law and legalism instead of grace and love. We go back to Moses instead of Jesus. Let's stay in Hebrews and read chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Anybody who gets it can read it. Now Moses was faithful in all his house as a servant for testimony of those things which were to be spoken later. 
But Christ was faithful as a son over his house, whose house we are, if we hold fast our confidence and the boast of our hope firm until the end. The house, what we talked about before. We are not, Paul is not putting down the old. He's saying it was great. We read earlier, somebody, uh, Russ or David read, how Moses got the vision of the tabernacle and the whole thing from God. And he, and he made it on earth what God showed him of the heavenly design. These, these are not put downs. They're just saying we've got to move on and transition from it. We've got to move on from Moses, from the law. You know, Paul goes on to talk to T Timothy. Uh, we won't read it right now, but in the first chapter of 1 Timothy, he talks about who the law is for. And it's not for the righteous. Which is why Paul says things in Galatians, like, why do you want to go back to the law? You came out from under that. You were delivered from the Spirit. You were given freedom. You've become a son. The law was supposed to get you to Jesus. It did its job. Are you going to walk away from him and go back to the law now? And this all might sound like, well, yeah, I know all that. The practical application of it is how often do we wield the law instead of grace? And I will tell you, it's, just very, it's very easy to determine where you're at is if, we used the word punishment earlier, if our first instinct is to punish instead of pardon. It's a good little barometer. Is my heart filled with grace and love for that person? Do I have to work up grace and love? So I'm going to have grace and love. Grace and love. I'm going to have grace and love. You know, really. I think we might have a little problem there. Maybe not. Because see, what we really want, we want justice. It's not fair. It's not right. He's got to pay the price for what he did. Yeah, it's not evil, wicked stuff. It's just going back to our roots, to the law. That's what the law is about. Joseph says, I just want to put her away quietly. Joseph's already moved beyond the law to love and grace. I know what the law says. I'm not interested. I know what he deserves. You know what? I know what I deserve. It's a very sobering thought, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So Hebrews is saying, listen, you can go back and be a Jew if you want. You can be a son of Moses and the whole thing. Or you could be a son of David. The sure mercies of David that the Bible talks about, you can be merciful. You can be inviting your enemy to your table to eat with you. It's your call. You do what you want. But if you want to become like Jesus, if you're intent on transforming into a son, then you're going to have to transition away from the law into grace and love. You've got, you got to go there. We could read more, we won't right now, we'll just go to the third one, because I'm sure it's, I don't even want to look at the clock, I'm sure it's getting late. Um, the third one, I just said revert to parceling the land, which, you know, that's what it talks about, what Joshua did. That Joshua, you know, we know the story of Joshua, they went into the land and he divides up the land. But we've got to get away from that. So what are you talking about dividing up the land? Mine and yours. That's what dividing up the land was about. Instead of throwing 12 tribes in there and saying, go ahead and live together in the unity of the Spirit, I know how to keep them all happy. Give Reuben a plot. Give Simeon a plot. Give Judah. A plot. Just give them all their own. Let's divide it all up. I'm a Reubenite. I'm a Presbyterian. I'm a Jew. I'm a Charismaniac. Whatever. Let's just divide it all up, keep it nice and separate. And Paul's saying, and Jesus says the same thing, Father, that they would be one. If they could get over this dividing up the land thing, the mine and yours, and be in ours, be a we, be in us. 
but we tend to revert to mine and ours. You, I guarantee before the week is out, if you're having any kind of a spiritual dialogue with anybody, a church is going to be mentioned in the context of a denomination and this is what they do or whatever. We have got such an us and them mentality in the kingdom of God, it's unbelievable. If that's not Jewish, nothing is. If we haven't divided up our tribes, I talked about this last Sunday morning. I was just was wondering that, you know, who was, who's in the prayer camp? The IHOP. For, you know, I'm an IHOP man. Oh, that's great. That's your plot of land. I'm in the healing camp. Oh, I'm in the prophetic camp. Oh, I'm in the miracles camp. Because, see, we would say stuff like, well, I'm not denominational. Steady. I'm in the worship camp. It's all about worship. While the homeless guy under the bridge over here is going to die tonight. It's all about worship. Sheesh, I don't know. We've got all of our camps. Now, I'm not putting down the camps. What I'm trying to do is break down the walls between the camps so we function as a whole. Because that's the way we are supposed to function. As a whole. As a whole. The spirit of unity. Endeavor to keep the spirit of unity in the bond of peace. It's huge. And we haven't done that. We haven't been very good. See, what I'm saying, this book is 2,000 years old, this Hebrews book. And you can go through these different transitions in the book. They are in plain sight that we were supposed to enter the rest, the finished work of Christ as the sons of glory. Full stop. And we haven't been very good about unity, although the Holy Spirit has been screaming at us. I mean screaming at us as of late. And I say as of late the last 20 years. Out of a place we know the Holy Spirit does not scream. Out of Hollywood. No, 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 no. You've got it wrong, Steve. Who do you think is the one that's yelling as one in movies like Gladiator? or 300, or even going back further to Spartacus, the, that old movie Spartacus. I remember saying something at Bethel once about uh, Spartacus. <laughs> and bless her. This is in front of a lot of people. This is not, you know, this happened in front of a thousand people, so it's not. And Ron was down in the front row, and he's looking up, and he's going like this. And I'm looking back, and I'm like, you never saw Spartacus? <laughs> And he said, no. I said, what, did you grow up in a cave or what? Spartacus, man, Spartacus. And everybody was laughing because it's funny. Um, our backgrounds, you know, the kinds of things that, the way we were brought up, that we valued, you know, whatever it might be. But it's that, it's that tremendous scene from Spartacus at the end of the movie when they want Spartacus because they're going to crucify this guy. I don't know if you ever saw that part, remember that part of the movie where each guy, one guy stands up and says, I'm Spartacus, and he's not. And somebody else says, no, I am Spartacus, and somebody else. And by the time the scene is over, there's hundreds of guys all standing up saying, I am Spartacus. Which on one level is completely destroying the plan of the Romans. On the other level, it was the truth. That they were one. They had become one. And if they were going to crucify Spartacus, they were going to have to crucify all of them. Because that's the only way you're going to kill Spartacus, is by killing all of us. Now, if that is not the Holy Spirit speaking, I don't know what is. I'm not glorifying Hollywood. I'm glorifying the Holy Spirit because he has been screaming to us about unity, unity, unity. Every movement that we've seen, whether it was uh, Pentecostal movement, I lost the name of the... Azusa Street. Whether it was Azusa Street, it's been the same message throughout the 20th century. Behind every different look, it's always been about unity. So, we still want to parcel up the land. We like mine and yours instead of embracing the unity of the Spirit. We'd rather go the Joshua route, the Joshua generation, rah, 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 sis, boom, bah, instead of the Jesus 
movement where we are all one. We all eat from the same table. There's a table of intimacy that we all enjoy. A bunch of no names. Not really that important. Who's of Apollos? Who's of Cephas? Who's of Paul? Paul says, I'm glad I never baptized any of you guys. <laughs> Paul's a funny old guy. Anyway, that's it for tonight. That leads us to, actually, Mount Zion, where we're going to actually start next week. The new and living way that Hebrews 10 and 20 talks about, the, you know, the new and living way. You have not come to Mount Sinai. You've come to Mount Zion. And we'll start next week. We'll take two weeks on Mount Zion. Next week and the week after, yeah, that'll work right. Because then Mark, two weeks from now on the Sunday morning, will do his thing. And so that'll all work right. So the next two weeks will be Mount Zion. And I think, um, I pretty much, I, I've already got my stuff all ready for the next two weeks. I think you're going to really, really like it. I'm pretty sure you haven't heard um, this kind of way of presenting Mount Zion as you'll hear the next two weeks. So.